Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope that you're healthy, happy, and safe. Now for today's video, I wanted to share some tips on how to shield a guitar properly. I know it can be a confusing subject for a lot of newcomers, but don't worry, we'll walk you through. Now on the bench today, I've got an MJT Jazzmaster build that belongs to my good friend Josh, a uh, lovely bloke. I, I absolutely adore him. He dropped off a huge 12 pack of beer and uh, yeah, we're getting through it. Josh asked me to shield the guitar before I install the electronics and hey, that means it's the perfect time to share some of my techniques with you. Now I'm already halfway done, but we're gonna do the rest together and I'm gonna share some tips on how I get a clean finish, how I check for continuity and how I end up with a, a quieter guitar at the end of the process. So follow along, won't you? Now you can see I'm already about halfway finished with this job, but I'm just gonna show you a couple small sections of my process and you can apply those to pretty much any route, any cavity, any guitar type. Now there are a few things you're gonna to need to get this job done properly. Number one, uh, whichever kind of foil tape you prefer. A lot of people argue that copper is better and it is marginally. Aluminum foil tape also works just as well. However, one thing you wanna be aware of is that the tape you use needs to have conductive adhesive. Conductive adhesive allows each piece to mate with another uh, just from the adhesive alone, rather than having to have overlapping pieces and you know little bits of trickery to make the foil touch other foil. It, this just makes the job and process a lot easier. So whichever you go, aluminum, copper, go for the conductive adhesive, even if it costs a little bit more. Now, another thing you'll need is a fresh, clean razor blade. A good sharp razor is gonna enable you to cut through the foil more easily give you clean lines and curves, in fact, which you'll be doing a lot of. So yeah, make sure your razor blade is sharp. Another tool that I like to have on hand for this job is a multimeter. Now a multimeter can, of course, be used for a multitude of purposes. However, here, we're going to use it to check continuity between separate pieces of foil. For instance, there are two pieces of foil in this rhythm circuit cavity. And if I put the contacts on both of them, you hear that little beep? that's telling us that there's electrical continuity between them, which is something you desperately need if you want your shielding to be effective. So keep one of those around and that'll make your life a whole lot easier rather than getting to the end of the job and discovering that something doesn't work. Now the last tool I like to keep on hand for the job is a piece of dowel rod. Now what this does is it enables me to get deep in the corners here and flatten out the foil tape I've already laid down. This not only ensures a smooth finish, but also lets me work out any air bubbles that might have worked their way into the foil as I was laying it onto the wood. So yeah, keep one of these around and it'll make your life a whole lot easier. So to start this job, what I will do is I will grab my foil tape and measure out an appropriate length to cover whatever piece of the cavity I'm trying to cover. Now, just a rough estimate, uh, probably about that much. What I'll do with that, I'll keep my thumb on it. I'll bring it over here and I'll just slice right through it. So now that it's sliced through, I'm gonna look at where my cavity is and the shape of it, and I'm gonna trace it with my finger, just like this. That's just the tip of my finger on the traceable edge here. And you can see, hopefully, I mean, <laughs> no idea if this is coming out on camera, but you can see, but now I've got the shape of the cavity. So what I'm gonna do is take my razor blade, pick a spot and carefully begin to trace out that shape like so. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close enough because you're gonna overlap the corners anyway. So now that we've got that, peel away the excess foil, just like that. I'm gonna take that piece and test fit it just to make sure that I did a good enough job. And that looks like it'll lay flat in the cavity. So I'm gonna peel off the backing Make sure to peel the backing and not peel the foil off because that'll make it twist. And then 
I'm going to line it up in the cavity. Get it in there real nice and tight. And start laying it down. Just like that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to go back over it. And fill in those gaps. So I'm just going to take my little piece of dowel rod, flatten out the bottoms like so. Voila. Now that's the first piece. The second piece I'm going to do here to continue to fill the cavity is I'm going to do this more difficult area right here. This is going to have a couple of impressions to pay attention to. Yeah, that should be plenty. So I'm just going to mark with my finger how much I need. And then use my blade straight across, lay down my foil tape. Now, now, same process as before, I'm going to stretch my foil over the cavity and start tracing. And do the same thing down here. A nice clear impression that will enable us to come back over here and start tracing. Now this top bit's going to be easy. Just like that. And just like that. I like to start the straight lines and adjust from there. Just like that. And a little curve here. And there you go. We got a shape. Now, again, I'm going to peel the backing. And to reiterate, don't peel the foil itself or else it'll curl up. You don't want it curling up. You just want it, see, curled a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to take this piece of foil and once again, line it up. I remember some of these lines might be a little bit bigger. You can see here the way MJT routes their swimming pool. There's a little shelf here. Uh, so this part of my foil is just a little bit longer than it needs to be, but don't worry about that. A little bit of bunching up is okay. And same thing for down here. That's not going to quite fit. Just like that. The reason I try to aim for such a clean finish is man, I've seen so many balled up pieces of foil hiding out in electric guitars that it really bums me out. So I just, I just try to go the extra mile. I just want everybody to have well functioning, beautiful guitars. And one of the hardest parts of the job is fixing someone else's work or mistakes. Um, there, there are there are two separate <laughs> things I'm talking about there. Sometimes parts fail. Other times, parts were not installed correctly. So I like to think about the next guy. So I'm really striving to make this as beautiful and clean as possible, because when that next guy opens this up, I want him to go, wow, this guy must have been good looking and very smart. So that's laying down really nice, I think. So the next thing I want to show you, I know I'm not done with the bottom of this cavity, but I know a lot of you are wondering, well, what does he do for the sides? And the sides are actually the easiest part, generally. All I do is I take my foil and I make the shape. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close. And then, again, I take it, I blade it straight across at the length I want. And because this foil tape is conductive, then it doesn't matter if I overlap. That's actually great. So. What I do, now that I've got a rough idea of the shape I need, peel off the backing. And then I just, again, sort of make that shape and start lining. I know some of you are going to watch this and go like, my god, this is way too complicated. This is over the top. And yeah, I agree. That's, <laughs> that's kind of me. I get it. I absolutely agree. It is a lot of work. Every 
Everybody's got their thing, and this is one of mine. I love this process a lot. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And do the same thing with my little piece of dowel and just trace the work I've already put in. Also, word to the wise, do be careful on foil tapes of any kind because the edges are incredibly sharp and you could cut yourself, uh, the likes of which uh, only those of you who have had paper cuts will know. What I do here is thinking of a step down the road, which is making sure that whatever foil I lay down on the body will later make contact with the foil I'll lay down on the guard. Uh, that is incredibly important. Basically, what you're doing is you're making a Faraday cage. You're, you're kicking out electrical interference. You're stopping it from getting into the pickups, etc., etc. Long story short, you can do all of this and make your body look clean, but if you forget to mate the foil in the body to the foil on the guard, then it's all for naught. You need to make sure that they're connected. Um, so what I like to do for that is I like to have little overlaps where I know that there will be screws close by because screws are going to hold the guard flat against the body. And that's what we want to make contact. Usually on Jazz Masters, there's a screw right in this area. So I'm going to give a generous little overlap there. And because you're checking for continuity throughout this entire process, well, it doesn't matter what the overhang looks like. It doesn't matter that you're using multiple pieces of tape because it's all going to be connected. And as always, be careful working with a razor blade. You can definitely cut yourself and that sucks. So yeah, don't do that. And you can see that to trim the foil, I'm just running the razor blade along the edge of the cavity and that will give me the clean look that I'm after. Yeah, just like that. Ah, I love this so much. This rules. And really, you only need one overhang to make contact with the guard, but it's, it's just nice to, to have multiple. You know, again, thinking later down the road, there might be corrosion, there might be a problem somewhere. I uh, may need to remove some at some point for whatever reason. So that's how I do the edge. And yeah, I think that's coming out really well. You can see I've already done the edge here in this part of the cavity and it's looking great uh, and it's flat against the body. So I don't think there's going to be any problems with wiring touching this or any of that. Sometimes you can have issues in Jazz Masters with the toggle switch actually accidentally making contact with the shielding that you've put in, but this is so thin, I don't think that'll be an issue. However, if it is an issue, that's what electrical tape is for. You can just line this top part of the cavity with one piece and that'll stop any shorting on. So don't worry so much about that. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the rest of this job, but I'll show you what it's like when I'm done. So here's the final product. I have gone ahead and covered every surface inside that cavity to ensure maximum coverage and the best possible chance we have of taking care of any unwanted noise. I um, want to note again, uh, I've used pretty large pieces around the sides of the cavities, but you can see there are a couple overlaps. It's, it's fine to use a few pieces at a time, not a big deal. Um, the routing on the MJT body is a little bit different than what you're going to see in a standard fender. There won't be quite as many shells or outcroppings, any of that. So yeah, just be aware, have a look at the routing of your body and make the best decision according to that. However, I think this came out really good and I think we're going to have a really quiet, clean sounding guitar. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you the pick guard because it isn't in yet. It's got a few more weeks till it comes. So once that pick guard gets here, I'll foil the back of it and make sure that we get continuity between that and the foil and the routes. Also, I do want to point out the places on the body where I have contact points for the guard. Uh, again, corresponding with some of the more common screw options. Jazzmaster pick guards can have a number of different hole patterns, so I'm not certain what the screw pattern is going to be like on the guard that's going to show up in a couple weeks, but we'll see and adjust accordingly if we have to. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're well, and stay tuned for more instructional content. Take care. Bye.